Well, welcome to the next episode of What Else Is New podcast. I'm Tim Graves, and I'm in here in our, in our studio here. Actually, it's in the um, the Mo Room. It's the, um, the Mo Hall of Fame Room. And actually, if you look behind us here, we have the Mo plaque. That plaque has been around forever. I think it's been around for like 20 years. But it's actually where we dedicate the academy to. So, you know, the academy is dedicated to Mo Murray, Mo Norman, um, for his friendship, mentorship, inspiration. I'm um, regarded by many as the world's greatest ball striker. And goes on, talks about his 59s and so on. And then right below that, we have the Founders Black, where the guys that have donated money to our facility and really appreciate all the stuff they've done. And you notice there's a lot of spots open for, for more donations for our facility. If you want to get your name on the Mo Black and get in the Mo Room and get it in here with the Hall of Fame, that's it's an eternity. The stuff in the room will change. And if you if around the room in here, we've got different um, insignias of Mo's. We got Mo's some master stuff in here. We got we'll have some Mo clubs that he played different in here, and a lot of pictures of Mo. But things rotate in here, but that'll always be here. The, the Mo Black and then the Founders Black will always be here. But anyway. Um, this month, though, so let's talk. I got Chris Henning here as a guest um, this month. Have we ever done this together, Chris? I, I think we've done maybe one or two. One or two? Have we really? Well, you're, you're infamous. I've totally forgotten. <laughs> so easy anyway, to forget. So you're easy to forget. Um, but um, anyway, you know, in this in this little session of the podcast, I want to talk a little bit. You know, Chris is our he's our marketing guy. Number one, he does a lot of marketing for Grace Golf. Um, does all her marketing for Grace Golf. So when you guys see that emails or when you're screaming about the emails, you can blame Chris. Um, but um. He's the one that tracks and monitors all our stuff and makes sure that things are getting out. And you guys know about what's going on. He does the mo- motivator, so um, you know he does the um, the mo the mo newsletter, the motivator newsletter. I do the weekly, the biweekly one to the public or to everybody. Then he does one to the members, and then the mo box that just came out, the beautiful mo box that's for the some of the members, and we've got that. Mo Chris is responsible for that, but um, so Chris does a lot. Does obviously a lot of work with all the guys here, but but I like to bring Chris in here because um, we have. Um, He's our fitness guy. I mean, obviously, first of all, number one, he's in better shape than all of us. But number two is he really works hard in fitness. In fact, um, we're, we talk about how big of a wimpy is. Um, so we, we talk the wimpy Chris now. Is, it is true. Tell, why don't you tell him what you did there at night, Chris? Because I was actually in Monterey. I was in Monterey teaching. Wasn't that when you did this? Because you were texting me. It was late at night. He was texting me. So tell everybody what you did. So uh, I've <laughs> been getting advice from Tim on on cycling. Yeah, biking. I used to bike a lot in college. I biked a ton in college. And I'm trying to beat his times. He's given me all these times yeah, that he yeah. has, and I'm not even close. And I was crossing an intersection. I stood up on my bike and the crank snapped off yeah. and my foot hit the ground. Uh-huh. And I've got a major sprain on my big toe and a, a hairline fraction, one of the bones down there. On your, so on your right been, foot? Yeah. So are you biking with it? The bike no, is, yeah, are you, bike, got, are you biking with your busted leg? I, I would I, I got the bike fixed. Uh-huh. I'll do biking. And the wife is uh, trying to keep me off of it. Oh, so, so I'm so going. Excuses, excuses. Tonight, I will be on it. Yeah, so, so excuses. So in other words, because he couldn't break my speed records in my, my certain areas, he broke his crank on his bike. He broke his leg. He sprung his purpose. big toe. Yeah, on purpose. Just <laughs> not do it. <laughs> so, so excuses, excuses, excuses. Now, when I set those records around the thing, my records, I was about 30 years younger. I was about 40 pounds lighter. You follow me here. You see him getting here. And I actually, chance. see, I actually, when I was in college, I actually, um, <clears throat> they, you have, you had with off season programs and I convinced coach that I could ride bike with a biking club there. So I, that's why I rode a ton of bike and we literally would draft. And I mean, they'd go biking tournaments. I never biked. So I didn't do that type of stuff for events. I never did that, but they did. I actually, <laughs> funny story. One time, I don't know if I've ever told you a story. I tell you about my triathlon we did. No. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> this may be the stupidest things ever. Okay. So I lived, I was a couple, my, I lived in college and my, my junior year, I moved out into a apartment outside of Stillwater. And I was re- living with a guy who ran track, broke the state. And another guy who was, he was a, a um, he threw javelin and something else with Oklahoma state, but they're both track athletes. Okay. And, and I, and I actually, I don't know if I played golf, 
And so that we always talked about you know, who was the best, who was in the best shape, who, you know, and so I started riding bike a ton. You know, I literally, in the, in the weekends, I might ride a hundred miles. I mean, I rode a lot. I mean, now for bikers, that's not a lot, but for me, that was a lot, but I'd ride a lot and I'd ride every day. So I'd ride 15, 20 miles every day. This was an off season, keep in shape. And then I'd ride you know, hard on the weekends. Well, we had this comp, we had this debate. We were like, who's in better shape? So the way we figured it out was we did a triathlon, a mini triathlon. So we swam and we biked and we ran because we thought at least we got the biking and running together. Okay. So what we did is we had a pond. <laughs> this is the stupidest thing ever. We had a pond out in front of our apartment. It was in the middle of the apartments. It was this pond. Okay. And we figured out it was about like 10 blocks across it and like 10 blocks back. Well, all of us would drown because we, none of us really swam. So we got our girlfriends on these rafts to go next to us so we wouldn't drown. Okay. So we, we all three of us. And then we, what we did is we rode 15 miles out and 15 miles back. It was from Stillwater to I-35 and back. And then we ran a mile into Stillwater and a mile out. So we, so this was going to be about like a 20 block swim, a 30 mile ride, and then a two mile run. Okay. Now I knew that I hated running and I've always hated running. So I knew I had to be so far ahead of him when I came off that bike because these guys were guys from track. This is what they did. I had to be like, I had to lap them, okay? So to, to, literally to win this thing because I was going to prove that bikers are better than running than track athletes. Okay. So we get in the pond and we jump in. Now, first of all, this is a, this is a snake infested, moss infested pond that we jump in and we swim. We have our girlfriends with us. And actually, my wife was actually with us. She's my girlfriend at the time. She's my wife now. So we, we swim out and all three of us just tried not to drown. Okay, so we, so we swam out and we swam back. So we get out of the lake at the, the pond at the same time. We run into our apartment to change clothes. So yeah, we're real track, we're real triathlons. We run into change clothes. So I changed my biking shorts. These guys put in the running shorts on. So I already know they're busted. And we hit the bike and we go. And I literally, I just hammer it. And I got out to I thirty five and I'm halfway back and they're just passing me. So they've gone eight miles and I've already gone twenty four. Yeah, I'm coming back. So I pass them as they're halfway out. Okay. I'm hammering them. So I get back and, but I know if I'm, when I'm running, I'm out, I'm going to be okay. So I jump in, I run into the apartment to change. <laughs> and I remember when I ran to the apartment, the people that live below me go, what are you doing? And I told them, they go, you guys are morons. I never forget that. So I run out and I run out and I'm running out the neighborhood and I take a left turn onto the road and I have about a half a mile to go out. And the guys are just coming in the neighborhood. So I'm like a mile ahead of them. Okay. And I'm running. And I get a mile out and I turn around and the guys are meeting me and both of them are on the ditch and they're both throwing up in the ditch. <laughs> so, okay. and we just quit and we walked in. <laughs> so these two track athletes, if they had to, after they had to swim and ride their bike, they literally a half a mile out and running, they're sitting in the ditch throwing up. <laughs> so was the swim, was that, that going to be the last event? No, the swim was the first event. First We're in the event. pond first. And then we rode and then we ran. So the running was the last, but I, but I knew I had to be so far ahead of him because I'm horrible running. But as I passed him in the ditch and they were sitting in the ditch throwing up, we just walked in. We just like, screw it, we're done. We so there was no winner. There was, there was no DQ. Winner. <laughs> we were all DQ. Officially, I may be the only one that finished, but it was just the stupidest thing we ever did. I have, I have no chance of beating the record. <laughs> I, I'm getting passed by women out there. <laughs> On the bike? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying like hell to well, get to pedal. We used to... I. My old house, this was the first house my wife and I bought backed up to Lake Hefner. And there's a 10 mile, it's actually like 9.6 or 9.7. Yep, that's it. I, I wrote it every day. I wrote it sometimes twice a day. It's like 9.6 around the lake. And when I was serious, I did it one time, one time, and I did 24 minutes. And um, I, I mean, I just busted on it. But that's also when I rode a road bike. And I remember after a couple of times, the top up part of that lake road started splitting and my tire would get caught in it. And I realized I can't do this. I'll kill myself. So I went into a mountain bike and, um, and then uh, obviously times didn't exist then. So, and you know, it's, it's pretty flat, but the wind out there, it's the wind, it's the, the wind, wind is because you can change it because it's, it literally is around. It's a circle lake. You go around and it's literally a man-made lake. So it's a circle around it. And there's not, a, there are some turns on the path, but there's not a lot and it's all paved and you're, and you're not by a lot of cars. So it's nice, but you go downwind or crosswind. It's not bad. You go into the wind. It just hammers you. Yeah. It just, it, I always feel like I'm riding into the wind. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I, I don't know if I trust the bike. I got it fixed. I'm going to try to get back on it. Ollie and I actually have a challenge. We're doing 50 miles a week. I like it. And I can see what he's doing. He's at zero miles. So right. as long as I can go out and just go like 100 feet, I'm going to well, win this my, week. My funnest rides, and you should do this sometime. There's a bike clubs in Oklahoma City. And I only did this a couple of times, but I did. It was fun. 
we would literally take, and there'd be, man, there might be 30, 40, 50 of us. And I only did a couple of times. I did a lot. And when there's a South wind, they go from Oklahoma city to Wichita and they'd ride straight up. It's almost, it's a hundred miles, but it'd be with the wind. And then they get up and they pack up their bike in a bag and come back in a bus. Oh yeah. <laughs> there's no way. Oh no. No. And they, and they usually, and a lot of times they had vans to follow them and they pocket up in a van and drive back. And I did it a couple of times. So when you're going downwind the whole way, it's awesome. So you can get going real good. Uh, I do it because it lowers my heart rate, yeah. but it also helps me with uh, lifting weights and just mm-hmm. anything in general, and especially in endurance. So well, golf and, and it'd be great. I know we're talking stories, and we're, we're almost we're gonna we always talk stories through these things. But <clears throat> Chris, I want to we're gonna start a program again this winter. It's gonna be the fast forward program. And last year it was the first year we did with Chris, and it was phenomenal. In fact, probably the biggest response we had on a program ever in Graves Golf. I mean, it, per se. And what the fast forward program is actually, I'll let Chris tell you what the fast forward program is, but um, he's going to be marketing it hard and tell him when it starts. And go ahead, Chris, kind of talk about it. So, bit. we're going to start November 1st. It's basically our winter training program. Uh, it's based on John Olson, okay. which you guys took from, I think, maybe low 100s. Yeah. So, John Olson was an old student of ours that um, was basically had 27 handicaps. She's about 100. And he did some serious training with us over the winter. I mean, he was from a distance. He lived all in Minnesota. Indoors. Uh, all indoors. All indoors. 100% indoors. Um, he lived in Minnesota. Um, I think he may have hit the dome a couple of times, but no, it was all indoors. And um, he started basically in September um, after he came to school with us and worked all the way through the next year. And then when March hit, um, when March hit, he went out, started going outside and then started playing outside. And he started calling me doing a bunch of on-course instruction from a distance. And, and but long story made sure it went, went from a guy who shot a hundred to the Minnesota state amateur champion in one year. And this was a 50 year old, something 50 some year old guy that had kids that worked full time wasn't some guy that, you know, some 20 some guy that, you know, this was a guy that had a full-time job. Well, the excuse is, you know, golfers will say, you know, I'm packing up for the winter. It's like the worst thing you can do. You can actually improve right. over the winter. And that's what this program is all about. In fact, uh, Mr. Rapp is sitting out there and I had a phone call with him just two days ago right. about the fast forward program right. that we did last year. And we made some adjustments to it based on his feedback. I want to make some improvements right. to it this year. It's going to be Pretty much the same. So the, so the fast forward program basically is going to be a program that goes November, December, January, February. We're probably throwing in a bonus month in March. And basically it's a program that we deliver a video at the first of every week, you know, Monday or Tuesday of every week, typically Monday. And the first one, the first week is, is a full swing work indoor. The second one is short game work indoor. The third one is fitness work indoor. Is that right? The four, and the fourth one would be mental work indoor. Mental work with Paul Monahan. So you have, you have full swing work and then I'm doing short game work. And then you're doing the fitness work. And then Paul's doing the mental game work. So you literally have a full week every month. And then during that week, you work on that. We have Q&A sessions. We have different things going on during the week. Is that right? Yeah. And it's also progressive. So we'll start at like the base and we will progress you right. up. So by, you know, when golf season starts, you're fully ready to rock and roll. So it's four months. So because remember, and I said this last year, I said this in a webinar late last year. I said, if you only worked on three things, I talked about today in the school today. I said, if you only worked on three things and three things only. I could cut your handicap in half or make you a scratch or a single digit handicap golfer. I didn't say scratch, a single digit handicap. And I and it kind of get ripped about this in the webinar, but it's really true. I said, if you work on these three things, if you work on your short game, you work on your mental game, and you work on your fitness, your flexibility, fitness. And I say flexibility in particular. And I got ripped on that because the guys called me and said, you didn't say anything about the long game. You didn't say anything about the long game. And I said, well, first of all, the long game is only about 10 to 15% of the game. First of all, the short game is 75% of the game. Mental game is what percent? I think it's 87. Yeah, well, yeah okay. But let's put the mental game on top at, of that. At least and then you've got on-course management on top of that. So if you all of a sudden take 70, 70, 50 to 75% of the game, which is short game, you then add on mental game, you then add on fitness, you cover 90 some percent of the game, literally. So, and the other thing is, is that if you work on those three things, they dramatically help you full swing. <laughs> so oh, yeah, it's amazing sure. how many guys work in their full swing. They can't take it to the course. Yeah. Well, the 4D, for example, right. Uh, we had a gentleman that bought the 40 and he had, was having trouble hitting the positions. Right. Well, he started into the fast forward training right. and guess what happens a week later, he's hitting the position because guys, it's like the magic bullet. Everybody out there wants the magic bullet. And what is the magic bullet? The magic bullet is you are, your brain says, I want to hit this position. Your coach says, I want you to hit this position. Everything about you says, I want to hit this position, but your body won't let you hit that position. So just a little bit of flexibility work. And all of a sudden you can hit that position. It's not that you don't want to, it's not that you're not trying. It's just you're unable to. And, and it's amazing how many guys. Now, maybe when you're 20, 25, 30, you could, but not when, not when you're 50, 60, 70, you can't. So, but a little bit of fitness work, it's amazing what it'll do. And so, guys, if anything, when you get this fast forward program, 
if all you got was the mental work and the fitness work, much less the stuff that we're going to throw in there about the short game, long game, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, talk about the fitness work a little bit, just because, I mean, this is Chris's area of expertise, obviously. Talk just a little bit about it. Well, you know, uh, we sit, we're kind of hunched over. Mm -hmm. Our body starts to form into how we're sitting right right now. And so my job, and that that carries over into your golf swing, your posture and swing. So I'm trying to pull you out of that. So you're pulling your chest back. You're able to hit all these different positions. And we do it through stretching, static stretching, mainly, right. but also strengthening uh, because, you know, like Todd calls it the breaking. Mm-hmm. So, and that helps pre- prevent injuries. So right. that's going to be in fast forward as well, but mainly it's, it's really just stretching and flexibility right. work that we do. And so if I said right now, how many of our students, if we used to, we've got 20 students here today. Okay. And we have, we had 12 or 13 last week. We have another 15 next week. So literally we're going to see close to 50 students here in these three week period. Okay. And you come see all these students, you look at them all. Okay. How many of these students that we have come in here? Okay. And these are guys that come, these are the same guys are listening at home. How many of them do you think do not need to work in flexibility? How many of them are flexible enough right now to go after and to say, I'm good? None. I mean, we need, they all okay. need work. Okay. So now give me an average. I know this is hard to quantify, but if 10 is perfect flexibility, like you got it, you don't need to do any flexibility work. It's that 16 year old Gumby out there who's like, okay, last thing you need to do is work on flexibility. Okay. So if 10 is Gumby and zero is, like a, a brick, like you can't move. Okay. Tell me where our average guy is. If you on your rate, if I rate flexibility, that's a terrible way to rate it, but a zero would be like a, just a brick and a 10 is Gumby. Where, where's our typical student? Two. <laughs> two really? Yeah. I mean, so, honestly. Okay. Yeah. So two. No, no, no. He didn't stutter on that too. Okay. So you're talking, they're not even halfway to what I've been pretending. So where are you trying to get them? I know if they go from a two to a three or three to four, it's great, but we're, we're, I know this is a terrible way to quantify this, but Talk to him a little bit about this talk because people out there think it's this oh, huge endeavor you got to undertake. It's like this no, major no. life change to talk about that. No, I mean, uh, I recommend you do it while, we're, while you're watching TV at night, right. 10 to 15 minutes maximum is right. all you need to do. The real secret to this is just like golf or getting good at anything is consistency. Right. So if we can consistently do that 10 minutes a day, right. heck, even if we just did it five minutes a day, right. but we did it consistently over time, we're going to reverse all the damage that we've well, I'm done. Ask, I'm going to ask Chris this because I don't know if he knows I do this or not. I think he might, but I don't ride bike anymore as in on the road. Um, I, I stopped doing that. Um, actually, when I left that house, I kind of stopped it because it kind of got kind of too dangerous, you know, and I started getting on the bigger roads. And so it kind of, it kind of scared me. Um, plus, I'm getting older. I was like, okay, you know, but, but I do have, I have at my house, I have a recumbent bike. I have a, a stationary recumbent bike inside and I do religiously and I will put my hand on a bubble right now. And I'll, I'll, I ride it every night. Okay. I do. I really just told me, you know, I do. I ride. And, and you, you got no, a special table. Yep, I do. And I have a table set up and I can computer work, but here's the other thing. And this is interesting because I just got a new, I got a new place down, down South. I got my wife and I got a new place. I'm going to get a new bike for it. I'm going to become a bike in there. So I can get some exercise there. We walk a lot. We love it. We do tons of walking, but I like the recumbent bike, but I hooked, I got one that's a little bit older in my house, probably 10 years old that I use as a good bike. And I have bands hooked into it. I have bands in the front and bands on the back. Hook. I do. And I do tons of band work. I'm on the recumbent bike, tons and tons of band work. Okay. And it's interesting. I do this. I'll tell you why I do this because I hurt my left shoulder. I've, I've had a bad left shoulder for years. And I was talking to Dr. Goldstein and Dr. Goldstein is, if I listen to this, he's one of our alumni. I was talking to doc one time and I was talking, I was talking about my you know, rotator cuff work on my left shoulder. And he made a comment. He said, before you do it, because he goes, once you get into rotator cuff stuff and you get surgery on it, it's hard to ever go back. He goes, it's never fully healed. It's you always have an issue. He goes, before you do it, he goes, I want you to do some band work. Okay. And he gave me kind of some serious band work, but this is what he told me. He said, don't go into a cold. He goes, you need to get in a bike. You need to warm up for like five or 10 minutes. He goes, you've got to get your blood going and get your body going and then do the band work. He goes, too many people jump into a cold and they actually do no, they, they just do more harm than good. Okay. That's number one. Well, here's what's interesting. I was shopping for a new recumbent bike last night on Amazon and there's ones with attached um, bands on them, on the front and the back. Really? And now hook onto the bike that are hooked on there. Like, cause I might've tied on this. Like so you basically of, invented. I, I think I should make some money off it. <laughs> 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 no, I did. There's just ones time. that have bands hooked onto the bike, like in the front and the back. So you can do band work on it. And I'm like, mine are just tied on there, you know, but I, they work for me. They work really good. So, oh yeah, my bike's so jig- so rigged up. I got a place to put my computer. I've got bands on there. I'm doing all, always doing stuff on there. I need to so, see pictures of that. Oh yeah, I can send you pictures. And then I got the TV in front of me. So either I'm watching TV I mean, they're on my computer doing band work. It makes time go by fast. 
Yeah. I mean, when you're watching a program that you're interested yeah. in doing these stretches, you completely oh, forget yeah. about the oh. discomfort maybe you yeah. might be facing. Well, it's interesting. I, I like to go up there. It's I go up 10 o'clock at night and I go up there and I jump on it and I'll, I know like I need to be done by like, like when the late show comes on, I need to be halfway through that because about 45 minutes. And I watch the show. If there's a good show on, I'm, it goes fast. If I'm just sitting on the bike, it does. But I got to be watching something. I mean, so, do, you ever, yeah. do you ever find yourself just plodding along? Oh, no, because I have a, a, a little chart. I got a thing in front of me with those little monitors. And so I got to keep a certain rep. Okay. But what is funny is I'll answer emails. And when one pisses me off, oh, I'm hammered. I'm going. I'll crank it up to like a 10 or an 11. And then normally I'm right about a seven. And I realize my heart rate is like, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah, so all those hateful emails I get, I give you a good workout. <laughs> nice. You get in better shape. So we exactly. Know you've got like a six pack. Yeah, I've got some hateful emails I came yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, let's wrap up this one. I know, I, but I want you, Chris, to, if I'm a student up there right now saying, should I get in this winter training? We call it the fast forward program. If I should get in this. What should I do? Talk to me about it. Would you a little bit just say, why do you recommend it? Okay, just tell me because obviously they're going to hear me recommend it. Why do you be the fitness guy? In the, in the guru of fitness and busting your bike because he works out so hard. Talk to me about it. Yeah, this it's designed for the single plane swing and it even carries over to the chipping game. We okay. discussed that the other day. So this carries over to golf. This is designed for the single plane swing through all the positions beginning to end. Right. And I'm going to add a little bit of strengthening in there as well right. to help you, you know, like I'm taught on the braking position, right. but also Help you generate more torque, more power. Right. This this is going to help you overall with everything. Love it. But not only that, like think about this is like I call it the back nine fade. It's usually about a whole eleven for a lot of guys, right. and their score just plummets. Sure. So this is going to help you with all of that. Right. Here's what this is. And I'll kind of end the story. I don't want Chris to wrap this up, but it is fascinating how many guys when I do the rounds and I watch, they send in their stats. We talk rounds, and it's it's the demographic of the 50, 60, 70 year old guys. And they'll go out there and this is what you see in the round. The first two, three, four holes, not very good. And usually they haven't stretched well enough. They're nervous. There's something going on. They're thinking something else, whatever's going on. They're not great. And then three, four, five, six, maybe even through eight, nine, 10, 11, pretty dang good. It's not bad. And then, and then towards the end, it starts tanking. And it's very obvious what's happening. And that's what you're talking about. It's very obvious because they get in there and they, they're not loosened up. They're not stretched, not thinking right, whatever the, whatever was going on in the beginning. They're just on a good mindset. And then all of a sudden they get relaxed. They've got the little stretch. They got a little, they stretch themselves out by swinging the club and then it's going and then they get tired or they have poor nutrition or whatever, because here's the other thing Chris is going to do. And I'm going to I'm going to convince him to do this. And, and I know he'll, it's not won't be a big deal, but the bonus session Chris does in March, <clears throat> I'm going to have him do it over the nutrition. I'm going to have you do a little bit of nutrition okay. work because yeah. one of the big questions we have is if I go play 18 holes of golf, um, and I see these guys out there sucking down these drinks that are good players and they're pink drinks and purple drinks and brown drinks. What are they drinking? They're always got, I mean, I know some guys, electrolytes. Are peanut butter, yeah, yeah. And I know some guys are eating peanut butter, jelly sandwiches out there, you know, whatever, you know, what are they doing? And, and so the bonus one that we have in March, I really want you to, for that hour session, you know, and then we'll have a Q and a on it. I want you to talk some nutrition with these guys. So that like when they, when they're ready to kick off the screen and play some golf, even when it's cool and starts getting warm out, what do they need to do? Cause that's huge. I know for me, that's massive because if I don't keep my electrolytes going, I'm in trouble. I think we could also help them in that bonus month with like a pre round because oh, what yeah. you're talking about in those first three holes, your mind is not connected to your body. Right. It's like when I'm, when I'm warming up on my guitar, right. it's like, I've never played it before. Right. But after about two or three minutes, right. you know, I'm just flowing. Right. And that's, I think that's what, what we need to help them with too on the fast forward. Program. Okay. Well guys, um, you're going to hear a lot more from it. Chris is going to start advertising this. Um, obviously it's something that goes along with the membership. I was a level three and above gets us, Chris. So it is. Yeah. So level three and above gets us fast forward. I do know when guys, we put webinars on there. We put um, tons of quick tips on there. We put all kinds of training on there. We put tons of new instruction. We got, we got all kinds of stuff on there. And, and the fast forward program last year was like the biggest hit in the last year. It was massive. And that's why we're going to do it again this year, but we're going to put the fast forward on there. Um, we'll talk a lot more about it, but um, well, I'm going to end this thing. I was wanting to talk Chris about not whipping out. Come on, stop whipping out on me. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I set goals for you, tried to help you out. I guess you busted yourself up trying to reach these goals. I'm going to be on the bike tonight. Yeah, quit don't be a wuss. I mean, you probably bust something else up. You know, I've literally hit the back of cars and ended up on the front of a windshield. I, you know, I'll give you the last story. I'll give you this is Clark crazy Boomer Lake and yes, Boomer Lake, which shouldn't be in Stillwater is Boomer Lake. And this is, a, is. this is a pre my wife story. There's my I ended up dating my wife, started dating my wife my junior year in college. This is this is my sophomore year. I remember this very specifically. And I'm out riding with the bike club. And it was in May. 
you know, out riding around Boomer Lake and we're riding in a line. So you now the Peloton line, we're in a line. We're out riding around the lake and there's these girls sunbathing. I wasn't paying attention. I hit the back end of the car and went right up over top of the windshield. Just right off the back of the front. So that was a real good way to meet those girls. So I ended up on top of their car, wedged my tire in the front of the thing. And guess what, Chris? I was riding the next day. I didn't wuss out on it. Luckily, so, there's no girls in bikinis out on my Well, rack. there was here. And um, yeah, well, you do it. See, I had a reason for it. <laughs> <laughs> I get in big trouble. Yeah. And trust me, I didn't hear from the end of the club for a long time. So, yeah. It shows me how much of a rookie I was, how much of a dope I was out the ride. But yeah. Well, I'm going to make you proud. I'm going to be back out there tonight. Good. Okay. Well, you, well, you can have your wife yell at me. So there's no pain, no gain, buddy. No pain, no gain. You know that. No pain, no gain. All right. So we're good. Well, with Chris, thanks for joining me this weekend. Um, guys, um, start looking for this fast forward training. Uh, we have a blast doing this all winter training. Every part of this winter training, you can do in your garage, your basement, inside your house, wherever it is. And uh, make yourself a lot better over the winter. But guys, thanks for joining me this weekend. Talk to you real soon.